Hi guys, welcome back to my channel once again here on YouTube. Today we continue on with WWF, the year in review, 2001 uh, US uh, pay-per-views on DVD. So next up, as you saw in the thumbnail and description, we have WrestleMania X7 or 17. So Houston, we have a problem. We have a fucking big problem because we have two of the big names of that era, of that year, going head to head in the main event of WrestleMania. And this, ladies and gentlemen, was a spectacular wrestling pay-per-view put on by the WWF back in 2001. And it, this still holds up today very well and is probably one of my favourite WrestleManias of all time. There's still some WrestleManias I haven't seen, which I've explained in uh, past videos to you guys, which I'll hope to cover one day on this channel eventually. But we're here for this one today. So let's take a look at it. So yes, Steve Austin and The Rock on the front there. The Astro Dome at the bottom. April the 1st, 2001. And this is the uh, WWF Scratch... Uh, release from 22 years ago there's the spine i noticed the 15 certificates slightly faded so i might have to replace this at some point but i'm no, in no hurry at the moment that's the only fault i've got uh, with this one it's a silver vision release as well sorry guys uh here's the back it uh, lists some of the matches and the extras got some screenshots so we have the Two main event superstars at the top there, The Rock and Austin, face-to-face. -face. At the bottom, we have a, a screenshot from the TLC match. I think that's Christian and Jeff Hardy. And then there's some uh, pictures you can just about make out blended in the background, but I can't really see them very well. So that, I think this is Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit here by my thumb. Undertaker riding in on his uh, motorcycle as the American badass. Chris Jericho and William Regal behind all that text there. And China uh, pressing, gorilla pressing, whatever you want to call that move, Ivory. Here's the, here's the inlay, which we'll go over in a second. Here's the discs. Pretty cool. Put that there a second. Have a look at this inlay. And this has all the uh, all the matches and stuff on, as you can see. I'll go over all the matches in just a second with you. I just want to show you the menu selection. So you got the play it now, pick a fight, flashbacks, extra stuff. <laughs> nice. Uh, menu selection, play it now, pick a fight, flashbacks, extra stuff again. I'm going to leave that there for a second, guys. So I'll go over the stats quickly. I forgot to do that in the No Way Out 2001 DVD review. Sorry about that, guys. But yeah, because I usually like to give the stats. So the attendance for this evening was 67,925. As you know, it's from the uh, Astrodome in Houston, Texas on April 1st, 2001. So it had a buy rate internationally uh sorry in total sorry of one million and forty thousand what a fucking huge buy rate this had absolutely brilliant and the uh the matches very well some of them were good some of them were amazing and then we had one or two that were just meh i guess so there was Chris Jericho against uh, William Regal for the WWF Intercontinental Championship. It, it we went in as uh, Chris Jericho as champion. It's it was okay. Um, watching this one back, I thought my only nitpick with it that I thought it could be, you know, it should have lasted longer. Uh, yeah, it was it was okay. It, 
like I said, I just wish it lasted longer than what it did. Uh, Jericho did retain. But, uh, yeah, I thought those guys deserved to get more time together. They both did work well together. Um, but, yeah, that, that was a good opener, I guess. We had a six-man tag match next. We had Taz and the APA, Bradshaw and Farouk, against Right to Censors, The Good Father, Val Venus and Bull Buchanan. And this was one of the worst matches, I thought, of the pay-per-view. It felt pointless, something that you'd see on Sunday Night Heat or pre-show or even leave it for an episode of Raw or SmackDown, in my opinion. Um, the APA and Taz picked up the victory. It wasn't that long either, so thankfully there was uh, that to it, that good point to it. But yeah, it, you know, it, it happened. It, it, it was part of the show. Yeah, that's my opinion on it, guys. I didn't really think a lot of it. Uh, let's move on to the next one. So one of my favorites of the night now, a triple threat match for the WWF Hardcore Championship with Hardcore Rules. So we had Raven putting his championship up against Big Show and Kane. And this was absolutely fucking fantastic, guys. Absolutely love the Hardcore Championship, as I said to you guys before. I really wish they could bring it back. It was matches like this that just made it, made it what it was. Uh, all three of them, uh, all three of the superstars put on such a, an awesome show. They battled out the back of the arena. <laughs> Raven getting put through a window was quite shocking. Even watching it back again, it was just wow. <laughs> and Raven and Big Show, well, Raven trying to steal a golf cart and Big Show trying to get on the back of it and strangle him and while Raven's trying to drive it and then drives it into like this barrier and almost knocks out the power cables to the to the actual show, the arena, the event itself. And from what I remember reading in Power Slam magazine years ago, it could have um, messed up the entire pay-per-view had that golf cart been a few inches more, you know, towards the cable and, you know, broke the cable somehow or separated the cable. That would have been it. End of show, end of WrestleMania 17. And, well, <laughs> what a lucky escape that was. And, yeah, and then we had Kane chasing them uh, in another golf cart <laughs> with a referee in the back of the golf cart, which was quite funny you know, on standby so he can make the uh, free count or take the submission or whatever from whoever's getting pinned or in a submission position. You know what I mean? Uh, I've done some rhyming then, guys. Do you think, what did you think of that? Some awesome rapping by me. <laughs> I'm only kidding. But yeah, it was an absolutely awesome match. Honestly, a brilliant one. And uh, Kane victorious, becoming WWF Hardcore Champion, what an amazing uh, moment for Kane. He had a very good start to 2001, I thought. Come very close in that Royal Rumble. Um, just down to him and Austin. And I remember watching that back and thinking, come on, Kane, you can do this, you can do this. And then um, obviously he was runner-up. He did ever so well in that. And then winning the Hardcore Championship here on the grandest stage of them all. Very cool. Yes, I love that match, guys. Next up, we had uh, Test putting his European Championship on the line against Eddie Guerrero. Yeah, this was pretty good, actually. And um, I know Test gets slated quite a lot by fans, and he did back then. And it's a shame, really, because I actually thought he was quite a good uh, wrestler. And Eddie Guerrero gave him a good match here. And Eddie Guerrero beat him and became the European Champion. It was yeah, fun for what it was wasn't a five-star match, but it was still a fun match. What was a five-star match, in my opinion, was the one up next. Chris Benoit against Kurt Angle. Fantastic match. I absolutely love when these two wrestled each other. And obviously, I wanted Benoit to win this back then, and it wasn't to be. Nothing against Kurt Angle. It's just I felt like Kurt Angle around this kind of time period was a bit of a dickhead. Just my opinion, guys. It's just when he lost his hair, he got more interesting for me. He was a good wrestler, don't get me wrong, even back then. But he was just more of a... He came across more of a dick. I know he was playing a heel character, but... 
I just I just didn't like him. So he did he did his job well. <laughs> but yeah, it was a fun match, absolute classic that one. And uh, we'll be getting to their Backlash one in the next video in this series, Backlash 2001, their match together. I'll look forward to that one and talking about that one. But yeah, very good stuff that one. We had Ivory putting our WWF Women's Championship on the line against China next. And this was another one of those matches that felt like it didn't belong on the WrestleMania pay-per-view. I'm not saying both of them were bad wrestlers. It was just very short and one-sided. China just destroyed her instantly and became women's champion. To me, it felt like a step back because she, China had previously been an intercontinental champion on, I think it was, I think it was twice she's won that. She had won the Intercontinental Championship, but yeah, she had been an Intercontinental Champion and it felt like a step back because she'd like wrestled with all the big superstars, all the men and, you know, all the big names in the World Wrestling Federation at the time. And to um, to be put in a women's championship match, I'm not being sexist or anything, guys, it's not what I'm trying to say. It's just, it feels like it, it, it's, it was a step back for her. She should have been... What I'm trying to say is she should have been put in the um, WWF Championship uh, picture more. I know she got a championship match eventually, but then that got messed about uh, like a year or two prior to this. But yeah, but I'm glad. I'm glad for her. I'm glad she won the championship, the women's championship here. That is. But as I said, it just it's something that just didn't seem right. But that's just my opinion on that, guys. Anyway, I'll move on from that. Um, I hope I don't upset anybody with my opinion on that then, but it's just, um, I think you, you get what I'm trying to say. I wasn't being sexist or anything at all. I didn't mean that. I meant like, because she, she deserved to have gone for the WWF championship. But anyway, enough about that. We had the McMahons against each other next. So Mr. McMahon against Shane McMahon, you know, father against son in a street fight with Mick Foley, a special guest referee. Um, yeah, like the build up for this one was very strange. Well, to me it was. I mean, because we had that storyline going on with Linda McMahon, you know, being, what's the word for it? Uh, is it catatonic? You know, in a catatonic state. And she was in a in a home as well around this kind of time because she just um, lost, you know, lost her mind and everything. Like, Miss McMahon had just drove her that way and then he'd had an affair with Trish Stratus and um yeah it's just it's just a weird storyline I did I wasn't too keen on it it was very odd and um I remember Mr McMahon like before this he'd um and this was quite uncomfortable for me to watch he'd uh got Trish Stratus to get on all fours in her underwear and you know, act like a dog, bark like a dog or whatever it was. He just treated her really poorly. And then I remember she also had like um, like a mop, a mop with loads of shit and that all over it, put all over her body. It came from a bucket by Stephanie McMahon. And that was quite unpleasant and cruel, I thought. But um, yeah, the, oh, and Shane McMahon as well, had like previously, I think it was a week or two before this, had bought WCW as well, so it all came uh, came at the right time, but a strange time as well. So we we uh, had uh, Shane McMahon as the new owner of WCW going into this. The match itself, it was it was okay. Um, both of them aren't proper wrestlers. That's just my opinion, and you know, it just. It felt a bit clumsy in places, and Shane McMahon got a black eye off of Vince because of his, um, you know, would you call it a botched punch? I guess. Um, we had Trish bring out Linda McMahon in a wheelchair, and then some interference there. There's lots of interference going on. I think uh, Stephanie came out as well to help Vince, and then uh, Vince and Vince, sorry, Stephanie and Trish started scrapping in the ring. Um, 
I'm just trying to remember most of the match now. And then we had uh, Vince looking at Linda while she was in the wheelchair, saying, you bitch. And then he like grabs her and he brings her into the ring, makes her sit on a still chair. You're going to watch this. And, and makes poor Linda watch Shane get a beat in. And then um, she miraculously... Wow, gets up from the chair after being in such a state these past, you know, few months or weeks or whatever it's been, the build up to this. And she's not back to normal again. It's just a, a miracle. It's just unbelievable. And she goes up behind Vince, um, she surprises him and kicks him with a low blow, from what I remember. And then uh, this gives. Shane the opportunity to do a coast to coast. I think uh, Mick Foley uh, got a shot in on Vince as well before um, Shane McMahon done the coast to coast and then yeah Shane got the victory and it, it is what it is. I'm not a fan of any of the McMahons to be honest with you but I wasn't back then and I'm not now and you know it, I'm not going to say it was a shit match because it wasn't but if you like that kind of thing street fights are usually quite entertaining it's like a three and a half out of five for me if I was to rate it. But yeah, that's that one. Another fucking excellent match up next. We had TLC2 for the WWF Tag Team Championship. So we had the Dudley Boys, who were the champions going into this, defending against the Hardy Boys and Edge and Christian. <laughs> this, this was absolutely fantastic, honestly, guys. The, uh, the spots in this absolute spot fest. That uh, spear in midair by Edge while Jeff Hardy um, goes to grab the tag team championships and he's like dangling from them, trying to pull them down. That's so memorable. Probably for a lot of you guys, you remember that one. That's a standout moment from that match as well. Yeah, it's just things like that. Oh, and when Jeff Hardy tries to hop across, um, I think, three or four ladders and then he gets to like the third one and... It, it it tips and then he quickly has to leap to the fourth one or third one or whatever it is and yeah he completely messes up that spot and luckily he recovers from that but yeah there was just so much going on and it was, I was very entertained by this all three teams deserve praise for this we had a lot of interference going on we had Rhino helping Edge and Christian we had I think it was Spike Dudley helping his brothers uh Bubba and Devon. I could be wrong about that. I can't remember now. And uh, there was also Lita helping the Hardy Boys. And we get JR shouting that uh, infamous line of uh, Lita's trying to jerk off Edge <laughs> when she's shaking the ladder, trying to get Edge off the ladder. <laughs> Lita just jerked off Edge. I <laughs> think something like that anyway. It was fucking... It's funny, but just... It, the way it come out anyway yeah good good match and uh edge and christian became like a seven time tag team champions uh you know around that time i'm trying to think how long they were a team together because they weren't together that long and then they managed to win the tag team championship seven times in the space of maybe two years i, I can't really remember now so that's 2001 it, yeah they could have been yeah something like that but yeah, very entertaining stuff. Very good match. If you've never seen it, guys, highly recommend you check that one out. And then this, this pay-per-view seems to go up and down, up and down with entertainment. So after that one, and I'm on a high, you know, after that one, brilliant match. And then we get the gimmick Battle Royal next. Oh, God. So we had like Doink the Clown, Kimchi, Kamala... Bushwhackers, Iron Sheik, Nikolai Volkov. Uh, Jim Cornette was even in it as well, believe it or not. Brother Love. Fuck, you know. Hillbilly Jim, I think, as well. Sergeant Slaughter. Anyway, the Iron Sheik managed to win it. Uh, thank God it wasn't on for too long. It would have just done my head in. No, Nothing against the legends at all, but all of them, if not most of them, shouldn't be anywhere near a ring, even at this time. At this point and uh, I would have rather have been entertained with them all racing each other on mobility scooters like going down the ramp and going around the 
ring apron and um sorry the ring itself and then going back up the ramp and then going at the back like on a like a little mario kart circuit something like that would have been more entertaining for them all to do rather than have them in, in the gimmick battle royal but that's just my opinion guys but anyway yeah that was a very poor one another bad egg for this uh pay-per-view unfortunately but things started to pick up again thank fuck when we had the undertaker against triple h and triple h came out of uh no way out with a victory over steve austin in that two out of three falls was it and that was a good match um looking back on that and i was very impressed and, and i gutted i'd forgotten how good that was and i praised triple h for that and i praise him again for this one this one was a good match as well and i forget how good this one was and they, I remember him uh, brawling on a scaffold as well. That was quite fun. Tri Triple H doing his usual shit, trying to cheat with the sledgehammer. But yeah, he he done a he put on another good match, I thought. And um, it, it felt like a bit of a setback for him because he'd beaten Stone Cold uh, the previous month. And then you would have thought he had gone on to beat The Undertaker here. At WrestleMania, but obviously they were thinking about doing that streak, the streak at uh, this point. So it just felt like a bit of a letdown for Triple H in that way. But obviously he'd make up for that later on in the next year or so, anyway, wouldn't he? Yeah, good match that one. Very good. I was uh, very pleased with that one. It's not. It wasn't as good as uh, Triple H's match against Austin, but it was very close to being as good as that. Speaking of Austin, he's up next against WWF champion The Rock in a no disqualification match. And this one was an absolute epic war, guys. Fucking amazing. I just love watching this one back over and over again. I never get tired of it. Um, they both delivered brutality to each other. The poor... Those poor commentary uh, desks always seem to get destroyed around this kind of time period as well. And yeah, the same shit happened again here. And lots of chair shots as well, as you'd expect. Austin going a bit over the top with the chair towards the end, especially, you know, during the the hill turn with Vince McMahon. And he like wax the rock constantly with the chair over and over and over and over again, like 20 times maybe, just something crazy. And then um, eventually defeating The Rock. And yeah, they before Austin picked up the victory against The Rock, they were like using each other's finishers on each other and sharpshooters on each other and everything else. It was an absolute classic. Definitely one of my favourite WrestleMania main events of all time. And yeah, yeah the only bad thing... Anything I didn't like about it, I didn't then and I still don't now. And that's Austin's hill turn. I just There was something about it. It just didn't feel right. It was already bad in a way, but in, in a good way. He was a good, bad guy. I don't know. Very strange. But I didn't want him to have aligned himself with McMahon and, you know, how it all turned out. And it just didn't seem right and then we had him doing all that comedy shit with kurt angle you know that kumbaya my lord <laughs> crazy times but yeah overall guys what a pay-per-view highly recommend it to you if you've never ever seen this and you're new to wrestling and you want to check out a uh, wrestlemania go to this one first this should be your first stop um, I give this a score, excuse me guys, <coughs> I give this a score of nine and a half, I'm not sure if that's changed since the last time I scored this when I put it against All Out 2021 in a head to head, but yeah I give it a score of uh, nine and a half out of ten, the only reason is like revisiting it again and again and then those few matches that just seemed like they didn't belong on there you know like the right to censor six-man tag match and that uh gimmick battle royal the china against ivory match was it just didn't feel right but that's just my opinion 
Jericho and William Ring Regal should have got uh, longer for their uh, their match. Yes, guys, nine and a half out of ten for this one. Absolute gem in my top ten favorite WWF stroke WWE pay per views stroke premium live events of all time. And I still got loads to watch that I haven't watched, so that could change, couldn't it? But yeah, for now, that's the best uh, event of the year of 2001 so far. Next up is Backlash, which I hope to cover as soon as I can. I'm not going to tell you days and promise you things and I don't deliver. I've just had lots of personal shit going on lately, health and other stuff. But hopefully we can pick up some momentum now and get back to a bit of normality for you. Please feel free to like, subscribe and comment. Um, hi to new subscribers. And yeah, thank you for joining me today for that, guys. I'm sorry, I thought I was going to fall back. That's why I was trying to... <laughs> anyway, enough cheer chatter. Thank you for staying with me this long. Stay safe, guys, and I'll catch you again soon. Goodbye for now.